Here's a bit of math. Triangles. Who needs them? We have numbers. Aren't those enough? I know. How about to each triangle we assign a number? Uh, it's area. Bam. No more triangles. I know, I know, some triangles are different even though they have the same area, but hey, that just means there'd be fewer triangles to worry about, right? Uh, I don't know, maybe instead of calling triangles numbers, we could call numbers triangles. <laughs> that would be funny, numbers aren't triangles. Triangular numbers. These are numbers that aren't content to just be another dot on a number line. No way. You just don't understand me. They might cry from the number line, wishing that you'd spend an inordinate amount of your time fiddling with them on a piece of paper, so maybe you'd stumble upon the fact that they have something vaguely to do with triangles. Okay, let's fiddle. Pick a number. Seven? Let's try seven. Can we make a triangle with seven dots? Ah, there's one. But that doesn't count. This triangle's side lengths are 4, 3, and 3. That's not equilateral, as in not all of its sides have the same length. I mean, come on. If we're gonna call numbers triangles, we gotta have some standards. Turns out 7 isn't a triangular number. It's not? I knew this phone number was fake! For a non-negative integer, n, to be a triangular number, it must be possible to fill an equilateral triangle with n dots. What does that mean? Well, check this out. It's zero, the zeroth triangular number. Using zero dots, we can create an equilateral triangle with three sides, all of length zero. Still not impressed? How about this? One is the next triangular number. Plot that hot dot in any spot and you've got an equilateral triangle with side lengths all equal to one. Two dots won't give us a triangle, but three dots sure will, so three is the second triangular number. Every side of this triangle has length two. We can use simple names to refer to the triangular numbers, even if we don't know what a particular number is. We call zero, the zeroth triangular number, T0. One, the first triangular number, is T1. Three, the second triangular number, is T2, and so on. Tn is the nth triangular number, the number of dots needed to fill an equilateral triangle with side length n. The triangular numbers follow an elegant and simple pattern. How do we get from this triangular number drawn as a triangle with side lengths of 2 to the next triangular number representing a triangle with side lengths 3? Well, we might extend this side by 1, so now it has length 3, but we need the triangle to be equilateral, so we also add a dot over here to make this side have length 3. But then the side on the bottom needs to be filled in with length 3 as well, and look at that. To get T3, we added 3 more dots, for a total of 6 dots to make this triangle with sides of length 3. So T3 is 6, the third triangular number. We could repeat the same process to see that 10 is T4. So constructing these triangular numbers is a piece of cake, but do you notice a pattern that could clue us in to a formula that we could use to compute them without drawing them out? The zeroth triangular number has zero rows of zero dots. The first triangular number, T1, has one row with one dot. Then, to increase the sides of the triangle by one and find T2, we need a second row with two dots. For T3, we need to add a third row with three dots. T4, add a fourth row with four dots. It's settled. No more triangles for me. Who knew it'd be so simple? The triangular number Tn is just the sum of the first n positive integers. Like, how about T100? Easy. It's just 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to plus 100, which is just 1 plus 2 is a 3. The add. nth triangular number is the sum of the first n positive integers. That's simple, but it isn't exactly easy to compute for large values of n. If we're clever and use some mathematical ingenuity, maybe we can find an even better expression for triangular numbers. 
when we can visualize mathematics, we ought to. So let's consider T5 and draw it in a triangle. Of course, it would be easy to count the dots in T5 or to just add up the numbers one through five because five isn't very big. But can we find a process that makes counting these dots really easy in a way that we could also use for bigger triangular numbers? We might try playing with this triangular arrangement a little and not getting anywhere. Then we might think, well, right triangles are nice. Could we draw a triangular number as a right triangle? Sure, just like this. Right triangles might make us think of rectangles. And hey, it's easy to count a number of objects arranged in a rectangle. For example, this rectangle has four columns of three objects each. That's three objects four times, or three times four, 12 objects. Can we find a way to arrange our triangular numbers into rectangles? Check this out. We draw our triangular number as a right triangle. In this case, we have T5. Copy it, spin it around 180 degrees, and bam! Here's a rectangle that has five plus one columns of five dots each. That's a total of six times five, or 30 dots. So what is T5? We just figured out that two copies of T5 is 30, so T5 must be 15. And we could perform this same process with any triangular number. Take Tn, arrange it as a right triangle, copy it, spin it 180 degrees, and lay it next to the first right triangle to create a rectangle that has n plus 1 columns of n dots each. Thus, two copies of Tn is n times n plus 1, and so Tn is n times n plus 1 over 2. So the nth triangular number is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n. But now we know it's also equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. If you don't care about triangular numbers, just forget about the tn. This part is cool enough. The sum of the first n positive integers is n times the next positive integer divided by 2. Having reasoned through this awesome formula, calculating t100 now is a piece of cake. It's 100 times 101 divided by 2, which equals 5,050! F triangles! I had this done five minutes ago!